and I'll send out an email, especially f uh, for f any folks who may have trouble getting in. Okay. Um, well, it's, thank you everybody for uh, uh, folks who were able to join us today. We appreciate it. Just a couple of quick updates and then um, uh, we'll have uh, Rick Davidson uh, give a presentation here uh, from uh, Community Energy Advisors. Um, just in terms of our uh, updates, uh, one, the, the, the biggest news is that the, um, the, the uh, COVID uh, recovery fund program for small businesses, the mom and pops in particular, uh, the deadline has been extended. Uh, a lot of people are, are signing up and applying for this, and this is, this is a good thing. It's been extended uh, until September 11th. So I really encourage folks to uh, spread the word on this. And, uh, and also to remind them that, um, you know, uh, you're, you're evaluating how much and you can get a, a grant of up to uh, $10,000. But what's happening also is you, you can get a low interest loan of up to 20,000. And uh, there, are, there are cases where people are uh, requesting and, and getting, I think, the loan forgiven. So potentially you could have up to $30,000 there, plus maybe even some matching uh, PPE dollars. So it's a good program uh, you can get to the link uh, right off the PAMO website. And, um, you know, we'll continue to, um, you know, push it out. Um, I'm, I'm attending a meeting with uh, Next Street uh, here a little later today where they're going to talk some specific things about promoting it. Um, so anyway, just wanted to pass that on. And then uh, at, if, if you've been on here and heard us talking about it, uh, CODA is coming to do, CODA is coming to do a presentation um, at our next meeting. And uh, hopefully we'll also have one there from Prezuti for the Giant Eagle project. But what's uh, the date of that, Bob? I'm sorry? Sorry, what's the date of that? I'm trying to text John right now, maybe. Oh, sure, sure, there. sure. Uh, it's, uh, hang on, let me uh, double check. I, could, I thought maybe you just knew, sorry. I should know, but uh, it's October 7th. So, Thank you October very much. 10 o'clock. And, um, the CODA one is interesting because uh, they are in the process of uh, expanding uh, with this CODA Plus program that has uh, uh, smaller vehicles that can help uh, people f uh, for free. Essentially, it's like Lyft, and, or not, not for free, but for a very reduced price. It's like a Lyft and Uber kind of thing, but with, with CODA. And it also connects you specific, can connect you specifically to CODA routes. So it's, it's a cool program. They have a south side pilot area that they're hoping to start maybe as soon as November. And so this is a good chance to give input. Um, with, with that said, unless anybody has any questions related to that, uh, why don't we go ahead and have our presentation here. Uh, we have uh, Rick Davidson from uh, Community Energy uh, Advisors. Uh, this is one of the organizations that Pam is partnering with uh, as we're uh, we're members of the uh, uh, Southern Ohio uh, Chamber Alliance, and uh, th by working with them, there are a number of uh, good organizations like this that have uh, special uh, benefits and services that can be provided so, uh, for PAMA members. And so uh, this is a really cool one, whether you're an individual or whether you're a business, small or large, um, uh, these folks can help you uh, cut down on your utility expenses. Uh, so with that being said, uh, I'll turn it over to Rick. Thanks, Bob. Uh, so my name is Rick Davidson, and uh, I'm from Community Energy Advisors. I'm one of the principals. Uh, we started the company about seven years ago, and we've teamed up with, like Bob said, we've teamed up with SACA uh, and also NOAC. And so that really allows us to cover the entire state of Ohio. And when we established this program with NOAC and SACA, we wanted to focus on three key components, education, protection, and savings. And the two, the education protection is probably the most important because there are, there are more and more folks that are getting phone calls that are getting caught up into bait and switch, getting caught up into contracts that could cost them a lot more money in the, in the end. And ultimately we can save folks money, but we're seeing more and more folks paying two to three times more than the market is and they don't realize it. So we really try to focus on that education and protection piece. And I'll share with you some of those things uh, here shortly. So we really cover 
the entire state of Ohio. There's about 240 chambers of commerce that this program uh, can be offered to if they would like to uh, offer it to their members. So really it is uh, for all residential, it's for home-based businesses, it's for the small business, all the way up to the large industrial manufacturing. And we really focus on trying to make sure that folks are aware of what's happening in the marketplace today. So rebate offers. And ironically, I just got a call last week on this exact thing of the rebates. They, they call you with an automated call that says that the supplier has been overcharging you and that you are uh, allowed to receive a rebate from the utility. All you have to do is press one. And when you press one, it automatically goes to a call center. So obviously I took advantage of that and I, and I tried to get more information, but I was unsuccessful finding out who this supplier was. A few months ago, the PUCO sent a letter out to all the suppliers and brokers telling them that they need to stop and that they're going to find out who's doing it. The PUCO tries to do everything they can to protect folks from getting caught up in the, into these situations because that rebate is not true. So what happens is somebody signs up with that supplier they wait for a year waiting for the rebate to come and it never comes. So um, as much as we can stay in front of it and educate folks, uh, as soon as this one goes away, a new one comes in. So we're always trying to push those things out. Multi-level marketing. Uh, these things continue to pop up where uh, somebody is selling energy from a multi-level marketing perspective. And uh, at the end of the day, folks are paying two to three times more than they should when they, they get caught up into it. They Most of the time, it's a brother-in-law, it's a friend that starts selling energy and they sign them up. And before you know it, that price starts skyrocketing and they just don't know. They're not paying attention to their bill. They know their rates, their, they know their bill's going up, but they don't know why. Introductory or variable prices this is where folks continue to get beat up and pay too much. So they get caught up into these low introductory rates uh, that are super cheap and they think they're gonna save money. And within six to seven months, they're paying two to three times the market. And we see it every day. We get bills in almost every day that somebody's paying 12, 13, 14 cents for electricity and the market's five cents. And what happens is they do the creep effect effect where every month it just creeps up so it just becomes a new normal and and many times folks think they are doing a good job that they're managing their energy uh, until we get the bill and we educate them on where the market is and they just had no idea they they know that they were paying too much money they a lot of people complain about energy costs being too high but it really is because of the rate we just got a customer sent in uh, an actual contract to us and that contract had a very low rate to it. But when you read the fine print, there's a monthly fee that they charge that customer every month. Well, they're not pointing that out to the customer. So in the end, that costs the customer a lot more money. So those are things that sometimes it's that too good to be true. So we continue to educate folks that if you're going to sign up with these rates, make sure you understand what's in the contract language make sure you're working with somebody you trust that you understand what's in that contract language the next slide really is what are the active scams and frauds out there so we continue to see folks getting caught up into these power shutoff scams uh, where they call a customer during a busy time and they let them know that they're coming there to shut off their power within 30 minutes to an hour because they didn't pay their bill during these COVID times, there are a lot of people that are paying their bill late. There are a lot of people that are getting those disconnection notices on their bill. So they start second guessing themselves. And they start thinking, well, maybe I didn't pay it. Maybe, uh, you know, maybe I'll just go ahead and pay it over the phone. So when they talk to the person and say, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and pay this over the phone, that person comes back and says, well, that's great, but you need a prepaid credit card. So people go across the street to the grocery store buy a prepaid credit card and then call the number back and give them that number and it's a scam. If you guys know, or if you, if everybody here on this call knows an elderly person, they are now targeting elderly folks, telling them that uh, they are gonna shut off their power the same way unless they pay through a prepaid credit card and elderly folks are getting caught up into it. So um, as much as you can uh, push that out to folks that you know that may be seniors, 
Uh, that is an absolute scam. If you have any questions, we are a free resource uh, for everything energy. So go ahead and give us a call uh, or you can call the 1-800 number on your bill and make sure that you, you call them and ask them if your power is being shut off because the utility company is not going to just come and shut off your power. They're going to give you multiple notices. They're going to tell you exactly when that power is going to be shut off. Email demands immediate payment. Same way, they're, they're, they're sending out these mass emails to folks telling them that they're gonna shut off their power unless they pay through email. And the, the other one here is a equipment charge scam where they're knocking on your door telling you that you they switched out your meter and they're gonna charge you for it. Uh, the utility company doesn't charge you to switch out those meters. So again, they're, they're trying to collect as much money as they can for folks, but one more, disturbing is there's two folks that come into your place of business they're dressed like the utility and they ask to see a copy of the utility bill they want to verify that the meter number on the bill matches the meter outside seems pretty legitimate so the admin person at the front desk grabs a bill they walk the person outside where the meter is uh, the one person looks at it and says yep the meter matches everything's good thank you very much the other person stays inside the business and robs you. So they're taking laptops, phones, cash, whatever they can get. So again, these are things that the utility company doesn't need to see that meter number. They know what meter number is on the, on the back of that uh, building. But unfortunately, uh, you, these guys prey on, on folks and they just go down the street until they, they hit somebody up. So again, these are things that um, as much as we can push out. I'm going to go ahead and play a, a quick clip uh, and this is a this is a call that your members get, and it sounds like that they are actually working with the Chamber Energy program. And we'll talk about it after the quick call here. Uh, let me just turn up my volume so you can hear it. Yes, this is Laura Adams, and I'm calling in reference to the supply charges on your electric account. Um, I was just looking at the records. You had enrolled in a customer choice program for a reduced supply rate. And um, unfortunately, that's coming to an end, which could increase the cost. You can give me a call back at 513-506-7939. And um, your record ID number to refer to and call back is E018-8278. Again, that's E as in Edward, 018-8278. Thank you. So I play that because that was that was a call that was sent to an executive director that is with the Chamber Energy program. That that supplier that called has no idea when the contract ends, but it sounds like they know when the contract ends that they're part of the program. And what will happen is when that executive director calls back and says, well, I'm part of the Chamber Energy program. Is this the Chamber Energy program? And they say, yes, your contract is up for renewal. They don't know when it's up for renewal. And so what happens is then they get a copy of the bill and they enroll that person in and there's a high likelihood that they can get early termination fees because they're already with the supplier. So they do these things where they most folks don't realize. And I would encourage you that when you sign up with the program, keep a copy of your contract in your file. Always have that handy. So if you do get those calls, uh, you can reference your contract, but more importantly, just give us a call. Um, we are we always refer to the Chamber Energy Program. We would have your exact data. Uh, we know when your contract ends. They do not know when your contract ends. So just be careful um, and not get caught up in that situation. This next um, slide really is, this hits home and it and it hits home with a lot of chambers and a lot of chamber members. So it's really important that you work with somebody you can trust. This, this particular uh, member emailed us about a month back and they use 220,000 kilowatt hours and they're a catering company. And they are, they're struggling because of COVID. And so they were paying a rate of 5675. And when they reached out to us, they said, I just got a call from my broker and my broker said that I have to sign up right away because the market's going up and I'm gonna save some money. Uh, is there anything else that you can do? Because I didn't realize the chamber had an energy program. So when we started working with her, uh, the rate that he gave of 559 saved her money, but the reality is, is the market rate was, was five cents. 
So she ended up locking in a contract that cost her $1,700 more per year for the next three years. And that money she could have put back in her business. So she worked with a broker that she got a phone call and she thought, well, I, I don't, you know, she didn't know them. Uh, she surely didn't know if she could trust them. Uh, so it's very important that you work with folks that you can trust. And that is why the Chamber Energy Program continues to grow because we have been vetted by SACA and NOAC and that we work with so many chambers of commerce that we really focus more on that education and protection piece. And then we also then at the end help save them money. But we, we review contract language. If somebody's in a current contract today, we make sure we find out when your supply contract is up before you sign up for a new contract to make sure that you do not get those early termination fees. Uh, we read through contract language. If, if there are suppliers with contract language that we don't like, we absolutely don't work with them. There's a supplier in particular in Ohio that has contract language that says, at renewal time, you must notify them in writing 90 days prior to your contract expiration, or you're automatically gonna get renewed from a fixed to a variable for one year. And then that price skyrockets and you can't get out because there's a large cancel fee. We don't work with companies like that. Uh, we push back on these suppliers and we make sure that we're, we're doing everything we can to protect the members in that contract language. The next slide really just is the flyer that um, Bob, you have, and, uh, and we can push this out to everybody. But this really talks about, it's for that residential uh, home, it's for your home-based business, it's for your employees. So if you know that your employees are struggling, as long as they're going through you as a, as a business owner that's part of the chamber, you, you can actually participate in this program. So uh, we also help with small businesses, and industrial manufacturers. On the small business side, if you are a restaurant owner and you use natural gas in the cooking process, you can reduce that sales tax by that percentage. So many restaurants use 60 to 70% of natural gas in cooking, 30% to heat the building. They would be able to reduce their sales tax by that 60 to 70% and that could save them five or $600 per year and many folks don't know that. So if, if you are a restaurant owner, if you know restaurants, this is a, an easy way for them to save money. And they get that through the supplier when they enroll through the, through the supply side of the natural gas. Industrial manufacturers, same way. If you are a manufacturer that uses natural gas in the manufacturing process, you can reduce your sales tax by that percentage. So uh, we just work with a, a manufacturer that makes t-shirts uh, screen print t-shirts and they they blast it with a quick heat of natural gas uh, fired heat and they actually were able to reduce their sales tax in that process so these are things that we're always trying to work on uh, we have communications right now with, with the state of ohio to see if uh, car washes are available for this because car washes use hot water during the winter time so we're always trying to figure out new ways for folks to save money um, so Basically, it's anybody that pays a utility bill uh, can participate. We are at 10-year lows in electricity. Uh, natural gas is at 20-year lows, but I can tell you that the market has been increasing every day over the last several months. And you've probably heard what's happening uh, downtown Columbus with First Energy and the, the uh, House Bill 6. Uh, there's a lot of uncertainty that's happening there. If House Bill 6 gets repealed, uh, First Energy could shut some of those new plants down. And if that happens, that could absolutely impact the market. Uh, the capacity market is going up. Uh, we all pay capacity as part of our costs. And that basically helps uh, pay for new generation that's coming onto the system. We are using a lot more natural gas to make electricity. So as natural gas costs continue to increase, so does electricity because of that reason. So uh, we are seeing an increase and right now is a great time for your members to uh, renew their re review and renew their contract. So if they're in a contract today that expires two or three years from now, they don't have to wait until that contract expires. They can do it right now as a future start, take advantage of the market today. They won't start saving for another two or three years when the contract ends, but they can lock it in today. They don't need to wait until the end. And again, uh, it really is about 
friends and family. And during the COVID times, uh, if you're an employee or an employer, push this to your employees. They simply have to fill out the back of the inquiry form uh, that has uh, Parsons information on the back. And then we then will work with that customer. And it really takes about 24 hours. So when they send an inquiry form in, they send a copy of their recent electric and natural gas bill. And within 24 hours, we respond. And if you're a bigger customer, it takes five to seven days to get prices back because we run a comprehensive RFP for you. Uh, but typically, it's a, it's a pretty quick turnaround on how we can help the customer. If you're with a current supplier, that may take a few days because we have to reach out to your supplier and find out when your contract ends. But really, um, it's a great opportunity and a great time to re review your electric and natural gas rates today. I can tell you that uh, we, we want you to, every time you pay your bill, circle your rate. Start getting used to whatever rate you have on your bill uh, because if that rate goes up, we want you to contact us. Many folks are paying their bills online, so they don't pull up their bill. We encourage you to just pull up your utility bill, look at the rate, make sure your supplier that you contracted with is on there. And if you're unsure of how to do that, reach out to us. We'll show you how to do that. That's a really simple way to monitor how much you're paying. So this, this next slide, just as different examples of who we're saving money for, uh, it's funeral homes, it's nonprofits, it's um, uh, county commercial buildings, uh, it's residential buildings. There was a home-based business that we saved $1,200 because they were paying more than they should. They were paying double the market. And if we can save a house $100 a month, it's great that we're saving $100 a month. Unfortunately, they should never have been put in that position where they're paying that kind of money for their electricity. So we can help all size businesses. Uh, and so uh, as you get off the call and you know somebody, let them know to participate in the Chamber Energy Program. It's a free service. If we can't help you, uh, we'll let you know, stay where you're at, you're on a great rate. We'll put you in our system and we'll reach out uh, towards the end of your contract. How do we do it? We basically uh, are looking at different rates. So this example, we signed up Greater Ashtabula Chamber of Commerce, and they were at a rate of 8.7 cents. We got them a rate of 4.98 cents for 24 months. That's a 43% rate reduction and $575 a year. What happened there is that they changed over executive directors and they were in a contract that automatically went month to month and, and people didn't know about it. This continues to happen not only at the chambers, but also at, at businesses. So the CFO, the admin person, the, the accountant signs up for a contract for two or three years, they move to another position or they move to another job. And then that contract just rolls month to month and nobody's paying attention. So uh, again, we encourage folks that if you're gonna sign up with a contract, make sure whoever is the decision maker, you may not be making the decision for the energy, but you that is your company, have a copy of your contract just to know when those contract ends and put it in, put that tickler in your, in your calendar to know. And the example on the right is that home-based business that was paying 10 cents and we got a rate of 5.2 cents, uh, saving them $1,233 per year. The next slide uh, is just another uh, example of Van Wert Area Chamber of Commerce. But on the right side, there was a government building that had a rate of 5.015 cents. And the reason why I have this is because uh, it looks like they have a great rate and they do, uh, but we were able to, to shave that down because the market dropped and we were able to get them a rate of 4.67 cents. It's only a 7% rate reduction, but it's almost $1,500. So uh, you know, that's what we do for the members. We are always studying the marketplace. And when there's opportunities, we're reaching out to members to renew early because the market has dropped, or we're reaching out because we believe the market's going up and, and we want you to renew to lock in those future savings to protect you. We can't time the market, but we definitely study the market every day to ensure that we're given your members the right information to make the right decisions. The back of the inquiry form uh, looks like this, and there's multiple ways that you can send it to us. Um, you can just simply call us with information. We can answer stuff over the phone. You can email us a copy of the inquiry form with a copy of your recent electric and natural gas bill. You can fax it to us, or you can even snail mail it to us. 
Once we get that information, we'll reach back out to you and let you know what those savings opportunities look like uh, and what the, what the various terms and options are for you. It really is that simple. And then finally, uh, we have templates that if you want to push something out to your employees, uh, we can provide you a template that you can send directly from, uh, from your company to your employees, and it'll have the inquiry form uh, from Parsons that then they can just uh, go ahead and fill it out and send it in to us. So uh, that really is a snapshot of what we do. I know it's a lot of information. Uh, hopefully, uh, if you take anything away from this, it really is about working with somebody you can trust and just paying attention to your rate. Uh, and and now is a great time to send in your bills and have us take a look at it. So I would encourage folks on the phone to send us your your business and your home base or your home and let us take a look at it. Hey Rick, uh, uh, you got some great information here. I can't, can't thank you enough. Uh, would you mind uh, uh, sending me uh, your slides, and we can attach that actually to our our, uh, our YouTube version of our meeting today? Sure. Hey, Rick, I, I have a question for you, um, and, and I, ironically, I just got this push again. Um, the city of Columbus is working on a uh, an aggregation program uh, for the city uh, with AEP Energy and some other folks. How does that affect your program if, if they engage or they do this program or, or does it or is it complicated? Yeah, that's a great question. So there are many, uh, there, there are absolutely many government aggregation programs out there. Uh, we run some of them, uh, but in many cases that government aggregation rate, they lock in a rate for a period of time, one or two years. And uh, with the market moving, there may be opportunities to get better rates than what that government aggregation rate uh, is out there. So uh, typically most government aggregation programs don't have a cancel fee, so you can come in and out of those programs pretty easy. Uh, and really those government aggregation programs mostly focus on the residential side where the small business, they've been shopping and there are a lot of opportunities to shop with over 20 suppliers to drive that price down versus that one supplier at the community. But if the price is better at that time, we'll let your members know, hey, this is a great price that stay with that until the end of this contract and then we'll get you a new contract after the GovAg rate uh, changes. So. So uh, it's, it's another option, and many times it's a great option, but it's just another option for folks. The government aggregation program does not work one-on-one uh, -on -one with folks. They basically sweep folks in in bulk, and then they provide a great community rate where we're working one-on-one -on -one with folks where we're studying how they're using their power, uh, what they're using their power for. Example, on the natural gas to remove the sales tax. They, they're not gonna get that through the government aggregation program, they would get that through us. So uh, that's how we, we separate ourselves a little bit. Okay, thank you. Cool. Other, other folks, uh, what kind of questions do you have for Rick? Anybody? I encourage people to give it a try, both residential and also business. And maybe come back to Pama and share, uh, you know, your experience because I think there's nothing like personal experience, you know, with people that you know, uh, you know, to kind of boost uh, momentum. Absolutely, absolutely. Cool. Any anybody else? Well, Rick, uh, uh, thank you so much again. And uh, yeah, if you could please send me the slides, that would be cool. And sure. uh, this is this is good stuff. And uh, uh, for that matter, if you want to uh, uh, send the uh, the PDF uh, inquiry form and email template, you know stuff too. That'd be great. And uh, what other topics uh, do folks want to talk about today? Oh, open forum here. I'm hearing crickets. <laughs> Well, for those who joined maybe a little bit late, um, you know, we, we did have a conversation briefly about some of the uh, commercial um, developments and plans on the south side. Uh, Curtis is the area commissioner um, that, that runs the zoning committee. Bob and I are both also on the 
zoning committee and so we will be bringing uh, information on a monthly basis going forward um, when it's something bigger like the giant eagle replacement development um, you know we may have uh, additional kind of information or conversation so that we uh, know what is going on with the other businesses in the community where we can be supportive so Cool. Any, any other uh, topics, anybody? If anybody's interested, I will be announcing conceptually the Kroger parking lot site tonight at Marion Village. Oh, wonderful. Good stuff, Aaron. Great. And, and so when I say commercial developments, by the way, I think what we've decided is that includes um, institutional uh, which so we, there's one for Alvis House um, on Lockbourne, and then also the the larger um, residential, um, which is more like commercial. Uh, so uh, that would include Aaron's <laughs> proposal. Yeah, next month. Cool, cool. Okay. Again, uh, la last call for other topics. Hey, Jason, anything going on with the uh, Columbus Board of Realtors? I know this COVID thing's, you know, um, changed a lot of your foundation work, but anything you wanted to share? Um, sure. We, um, you know, we, we have everything looks different this year with Columbus Realtors for sure. Yeah. Um, one of the biggest changes that you may have noticed is um, if, if you follow if you follow real estate listings, you're probably familiar with realtors and real estate companies doing a lot of coming soon marketing. You know, hey, I've got this renovation here, I've got this property here, you know, coming in and, and you know, I've even come into this group and said, oh, hey, we have this listing or this rental happening. Um, so that, that's, that's something that we have historically done. Um, as a professional organization, the National Association of Realtors has, cha has fundamentally changed the way we pre-market properties. Um, today, uh, the way, the, way the, the policies are currently written, um, we have to make properties available. It's called the clear cooperation policy, um, which, which essentially says that once you start marketing a property, whether that's a sign in the yard or, or whatever, um, you also have to have that property available on the MLS for everyone to see. And the purpose of the, the, the fundamental background behind that is um, you know, historically there has been a tremendous amount of, his, of disparate treatment and, and flat out discrimination. And um, as an organization, we make strong efforts to um, eliminate those things and the, this clear cooperation policy ensures that I don't just show my listings to you know, the 12 of you that are on the call or um, the people in my neighborhood or the people in my church or the people that look like me or whatever that might be um, so it's actually a really good thing um, to ensure that everyone has equal access um, to listings when they come available. So if you've seen a different way of, of folks marketing, um, that's really uh, part of that whole process. And um, as a board, we're working on, on ways to um, be able to do some pre-marketing universally. So pre-marketing where everybody has access to it um, is, is in the works. But overall, um, inventory has been extremely low. Um, if, you know, I've been saying for five years, wants to sell a house, now's the time to do it. Well, now is really the time to do it. We have, uh, I just, I usually have the numbers written on my board and I um, did a major uh, cleaning yesterday and erased them, so I don't have them up. But um, I think there's something like around 1,200 single family homes active and available in Franklin County right now. And that is roughly 10% of what was available um, 10 years ago. And it's, it's roughly, it's less, it, it, it's like 20, it's well, probably 15 to 20% of what would be a healthy market. So 
Um, there's tremendous competition. Uh, the July numbers showed us that the uh, median sale price was higher than the median list price. Um, I forget the statistic, but that may have been the first time it's been like that ever or in a very, very long time, uh, which tells you that everything is going over list. Every, not everything, but over the, you know, on average or median thing uh, in the uh, price print in the middle are selling for more than um, they're asking for them. So that's um, consistent with what we're seeing. Thanks, Jason. I think Bob is on mute and trying to ask something. I still can't hear you. There we go. There we go. Hi. Don't mind me. I just move my lips. I don't say. Uh, <laughs> what's your sense of uh, uh, the reasons why the market is so hot, uh, given that we're in a pandemic? uh i i know you know the low inventory and such is there but you know just it's, it's it's an interesting time you know with things i know the rates are low too i mean what do you have any particular thoughts insights about that can you guys hear me i think my camera just went blank even though it's turned on i can yeah. hear you i can't see you but true <laughs> um, sorry about that that's bizarre um well there's like there's a lot of different facets to that um one People have been reluctant to list their homes when they live in them, because if you live in a house with your family or whoever you live with, um, you may not want someone with a um, illness from a global pandemic walking through your house to see if they want to buy it. So um, I have a number of people who were on board to list their houses this spring and the summer who have decided to wait. And I think that's consistent in the, in the market. Um, you also, although there has been, there has definitely been a, um, an unemployment issue and, you know, um, other issues directly coming from the pandemic, a lot of the kinds of companies that are growing in our city, the tech companies, the startup companies, the insurance companies, you know, education, all of those things are continuing. They are still hiring people. They are still relocating people here. Our area is still growing. The, the population is still growing based on all of those things. Layer on top of that, um, you know, Monday is a perfect example. I had relocation buyers who were here all day long looking for a house. They hmm. are executive at um, one of the large medical companies here in town. And they were given the choice. They can work from the city they're in currently when they got this new job, or they can come here. They, they have a lot of flexibility. And they've made the decision, well, why wouldn't we come to Columbus? It's a third the price of what their house cost in New York, and yeah. they can come to Columbus and live. So even though there's a global pandemic, and even though it's impacting every one of us and our friends and our neighbors in our backyard, we are still a more attractive city than many others. So if you're going to live out a pandemic, maybe now you want to move to Columbus, Ohio, where you can get a large house for the price of a one bedroom apartment in New York or DC or Chicago or wherever. So those are, that's my personal opinion. Um, the uh, Morpsey housing strategy meeting is um, starting at 10 if anybody has registered and, and paid to join that. Um, so I anticipate we will hear some more um, up-to-date information from actual experts and beyond. <laughs> uh, thank you, Jason. Uh, any other topics, anybody? I'm hearing crickets again. And this time the mute's off. Okay. <laughs> well, if there's nothing else, we really appreciate you, uh, you know, joining us this morning. Sorry for the technical difficulty some of you experienced. Uh, we'll work on that. And, um, Again, code is coming uh, uh, next month, October 7th, and uh, potentially uh, some other presentations too. So anyway, so our take care, annual everybody. meeting, just to re uh, remind people, our annual meeting will be in November this year. Uh, because of the new bylaws, we have shifted it from February to November. So stay tuned on that. Cool. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.